So I have an unboxing for you today here at Snowy Owl Knits from the Woolery. We might call this a haul, um, but I had a little money saved up and I've been working on my spinning and so I kind of up my game a little bit. So let's open this up without cutting myself, I hope see what we've got inside. I know there's some goodies. I'm going to push this off to the side. And, oh, wait, okay. I don't know if you can see. I have a lot of stuff going on here. So, let's start, let's start with this, I think. Oh, wait, I'll get to that. I have in here a blending board, which I am so excited to get to. But first of all, I have three feet of sheet by Fabtious Fibers. And I got this in the tourmaline colorway. This is eight ounces of Blue Face Lester, which I hope to make some Rolex with. Oh my gosh, and look, okay, I got some um, raw wool fleece, and this is scoured, but it's blue face luster, and I'm going to open it up just if I can, if it's not too tied too tightly. I wanted some of the locks, so I can add some texture to what I'm doing as I'm making my roll logs or roll legs. Are we supposed to say roll logs or roll legs? I don't remember. But this is natural and undyed and probably will need a little washing. Um, oh, I got some hand carters. Where are my scissors? I've been wanting to get these for a while, a little while. You know, it hasn't been that long since I've spun, but um, these are some of the finer carters. Of course, the handle isn't on it yet, but um, again, another long range kind of project that I'm going to get going on here. This is. Let's see, this is also Blue Face Lester in the Cathedral colorway. And of course this is um, top. I love the colors and I think they're going to be a welcome addition to um, the tourmaline. So let's go on next. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. This is the Coriadel Stripey Sliver. Let's have a feel of this. This is going to be a lot of fun. I can, I can do so many things just with these colors. It's got a really great feel to it and I haven't I don't remember what the staple length is on this I want to say it's three and a half to four inches maybe a little bit longer again new project then here we go oh I wanted some um, this is Cordell 2 but it's in a black I just think with that um, stripey that, um, oh, this one's really tied together, but that's black, 100 grams. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is the Tessa Silk Top. I've been wanting to feel this, so let's see what that feels like. Oh, I know this is going to be really difficult to spin, 
but wow, it's super, super nice. And let's see, there's 250 grams of this. So we'll see how we use that. We've got a little pink going on here. This is Hidden Valley Farm and Woolen Mill. These are fib blocks. So let's see what, what's happening here. These are like the locks I think that get pulled out in the process that they're maybe not wanted, but it's got a really nice crimp and it's pink. This will be really fun uh, when it's in a roll leg, don't you think? You know, kind of scattered in here and there. This looks like fun. Okay, this this is the Coopworth and this I know will be super interesting. This one will have to be scoured, but these locks are so pretty. The crimp and it smells like sheep. <laughs> Imagine that. That takes me back to my farm days when we lived on a farm up in Pennsylvania. Hmm. It doesn't smell dirty. I mean, it does smell, you know, like you've walked into a barn. It's a pleasant smell. And, and let's see, this is, this is Romney Top. Um, I've been hearing a lot about Romney being good for new spinners, and so um, I am curious. And again, if I'm making it into roll logs or roll lags, oh, you know what? This is actually really, um, compared to the Blue Face Lester, this is really soft. Not like the Merino, but just, um, uh, really pleasant. I would wear it next to my skin. So far a lot of natural colors and I, I don't know if I'll be dyeing anything yet but I have some other stripes. Um, this is Blue Face Lester in the natural stripe and this is Cordell in the natural stripe. So again, I'm loving the, I really like the natural fibers, the naturally undyed ones, but I know it'll be fun to kind of mix and match. I've got, um, okay, this is mink top. Yeah, I said I, did I say I went a little overboard? I, I probably did, but you know what, this, this is a habit. You know when you get into knitting and spinning, how you can just go to town so easily? I'm gonna open this up because I, I, I wanna tell you how it feels. Oh my gosh. This, this just rivals everything, I think. It's, um, super slick and smooth, but also um, it has a nice warmth to it. Um, the silk felt a little cooler to the touch. And this, this is very fine. Very, It's a short staple length, maybe an inch and a half or two. It's going to take me a while before I'm able to um, add this into anything. And I, I think with the cost that I'll have to work up to that. This is the Blue Face Lester in charcoal. I think that's, yeah, 250 grams in oatmeal, yeah. And so far I've had good luck with um, that. I've got two more fibers in here, um, again from Hidden Valley Farm and Wool. This is more locks in blue and pur it's kind of a blue and purple mix. Um, let's get that out and have a look. I don't know if you can see the colors, but these are kind of vibrant 
hues and this will work out nicely for adding a little bit of depth and dimension to the fiber. And then the last fiber that I've got here is, um, it's also Corridel top, but this is in Scarlet, little, little red. I did get some um, Beyond Clean for any of my unwashed farmyard animal fibers. I wanted to give this one a try out and, and see if it, if it does its job. I'll report back to you. Um, let's see. This, oh, this is um, just a little sampler pack of silk slivers. And we'll have a little peek at that. I've got kind of a gold, like a true gold, a white. Um, this one is sort of a coppery color. And there's another one of white. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. So um, these, I'm going to keep these rubber bands, um, are the large double tined Viking combs. So, and I realize these are going to be very sharp, which is why they package them so that when I opened it, I can go to battle these, can't I? And, oh, I guess I got a little bit of literature in case I want to spend more money. Thank you. Thank you, Woolery. I indeed will if I ever have it. Um, okay, I got two um, yarn dispensers, and I'm going to open just one of them up. Um, Typically, I put things in um, whatever bowl I have um, to work with, but in this case, well, they're making it really hard for me to get into the box. These are so pretty, and um, how about, you've had times where you maybe had kind of an unruly ball of yarn and you wanted it to be able to rotate or spin and be handy. Oh my gosh, this is not just child-proof, it's human-proof. So there are these really heavy discs that have little rubber cushions on the bottom and they rotate. Those cushions will keep it from moving on my table and then I'll be able to park whatever it is I want to park on the actual pole. In fact, I'm working on, um, I got two of these, so I've been working on some uh, clothing for my granddaughter, and I think since I'm doing two, like, two things at a time, this will be really handy and dispense everything very well. And I guess the last thing, oh, I got a new drive band for my uh, polonaise. Let me make some room here. Here is, oh, I was so excited to be getting this. This is the Ashford blending board. And I've seen online how people are just getting the blending cloth, but I didn't, I didn't have a stapler nor did I have a cutting board I was willing to part with. Um, so, yeah, I spent some money on it and maybe could have done something a little more expensively, but let's see how it looks and see if I feel like I wish I'd thought the other way. I don't know. That's the other thing. Wow, these are nice and smooth. That's good. These are the the rollers for the blending board. This is another thing I wouldn't have had, and I know that um, from what I've read, um, you're able to attach it so that 
you can hold it in your lap and have it at different angles. And this has such fine tines. Um, it also comes with um, your carding brush. Uh, I think I'm still going to get a paintbrush as well. Oh, I hate all those little, don't you hate those little peanut things? Oh, oh, the styrofoam it makes my skin crawl. So this will attach to the back of the board. And of course I've got a bunch of, I don't know if it's got, what kind of instructions do you need? But, well, maybe there's some pro tips. And again, things you can buy. So, that was a big haul. And um, check back with me to see what it is I'm doing because I'm going to be busy and I will enjoy sharing with you what it is I'm doing. I'm attaching the, uh, the back of the board right now. So there we go. And then I can, when I loosen it, can turn it to any angle and paint my fibers wherever I want. So now what I have to do is figure out where I'm going to store all this wool and wish me luck. Check back. If you like watching me do stuff, subscribe, send me an email. I'll put my link on there. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I wish you happy spinning, happy knitting, happy crocheting, whatever it is you do. Um, yeah. And hey, be kind to one another always. Lots of love. All right. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.